Hello, listeners. I'm Tim Tradamus, and it's Monday. And with me, as always, is my talented and beautiful co-hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all listeners to Monday, where if life gives you Monday, might as well dip it in glitter and make it sparkle all day. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Bedazzled. Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for that. Well, my restless Sagittarius, it's your turn today. Hey there, adventurous Sagittarius. Get ready for a mid-June extravaganza that's going to rock your world and ignite your spirit. Love is in the air, and so is your desire for personal freedom. This month, you'll be feeling independent and ready to soar. It's time to have those heart-to-heart -heart conversations with your loved ones, expressing your need for space while keeping the love flowing. Remember that open and honest communication is the key to maintaining your adventurous spirit within your relationships. Now, let's talk about your career and ambition. This is your moment to dream big, aim high, and shoot for the stars. Channel your inner visionary and strategize your way to success. It's time to unleash your full potential and embrace opportunities for growth. Take calculated risks and watch your professional dreams come true. But wait, there's more. This month isn't just about work and relationships. It's about expanding your horizons in every possible way. The universe is calling you to explore new frontiers. Travel, education, and philosophical discussions await. Challenge your beliefs, seek answers, and embrace the thrill of the unknown. However, let's not forget to take care of yourself amidst the excitement. Even superheroes need a break. Jupiter, your ruling planet, can sometimes make you a bit too eager. So remember to recharge and rejuvenate. Taking care of your well-being is crucial to maintaining your adventurous spirit. So, my adventurous friend, get ready to rock this June like a true Sagittarius superstar. Embrace the balance of adventure and introspection. Fuel your relationships with open communication and chase those big career dreams. Let your curiosity guide you and remember to have a blast along the way. Sounds like Sagittarius's are going to have an awesome June. Yes. Me. <laughs> I don't know. It's a horse, right? Half horse. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong, the only horse from the body down. Oh. <laughs> like the half down, just not the half up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, now that we got our reading done for the week, let's get right into the stories while I enjoy my morning cup of brew. Oh, what are you going to enjoy today? Blackberry raspberry hibiscus tea. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, it's so good. I know. Made with a lot of love. I can taste it. For any listeners wanting to follow along, all story links are in the description below. For our first story, am I the a-hole for making fun of my girlfriend for writing fan fiction and claiming it's actual writing? My girlfriend, Abby, female 31, and I, male 33, have been together for a few months, and this Easter, I was going to introduce her to my family. We haven't moved in together yet. Abby is quite smart. She has a PhD and works in her field. I only have a BA, so you can imagine my surprise when hot and smart woman wanted to date me. Anyway, I digress. Abby's passion is writing, although she's never allowed me to read anything she wrote. She dreams of writing a book and says she's practicing and trying to draft things. One day, I was staying over and fell asleep, and she went to her office to write. When I woke up, I peered over her shoulder when she was writing and saw names that sounded familiar. I asked her about this, and sure enough, she admitted to writing fanfiction. Apparently, she already wrote 100,000 fanfiction and is working on her third one. She's saying it's writing practice, and she loves it. I told her it's cringy, and if she was serious about her book, she'd write it by now because she's pretty much already written two books if only they weren't fanfiction. She got silent and told me to leave her alone. When I introduced her to my family, I mentioned that she has a PhD. My brother and sister got impressed and asked about it. Abby tried to tell them, but I interjected and told them to not be so impressed because she wastes her time writing silly fan fiction, so I don't know how she even got her doctorate. It was meant to be a joke, but Abby was angry. She called me an a-hole. She wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the day and asked me to drive her home. I tried to come in, but she told me she wanted to be alone and write her fanfiction. I told her she was childish but left anyway. I haven't heard back from her since then, and I told my sister, and my sister agreed with Abby. I tried to call Abby, but she texted me with a-hole and nothing else. My sister thinks I owe Abby an apology, but I don't think I did anything wrong, and yet Abby is annoyed. Was I really the a-hole here? Okay. 
I guess we're just going to start calling this Spicy Mondays. <laughs> because <laughs> that story is really bad. So what you do, oh, Abby, is to just disappear out of her life completely. OP, you're in your 30s. You said you've been dating this girl for a couple months. So that's very, very new. You're already skipping to introducing to family. That's pretty early within two or three months of meeting someone. So that's interesting. Normally that doesn't happen that quickly. Now there are rare cases. Maybe if you bump into the love of your life and all that great stuff. Maybe that's what this was until you showed her you're a true douche. That's gross. That you would introduce her, tell your family of her achievements. And then as a joke that you think is a joke, you told them that it didn't mean anything because she writes fan fiction. How did you not see that when you were writing this to us, that maybe you shouldn't have sent that out to the internet? I'm sure this basement dwelling cave troll got an earful from Reddit. Yeah, I don't understand why you would be thinking that way in your 30s. It doesn't matter what type of writing it is. It's still writing. There have been plenty of people that have written amazing fan fiction that should be considered novels in books. Oh, I love fan fiction. So I definitely agree with that. And that's how I've been introduced to them through voice. I don't get why the small mindedness is happening there. I can understand why she never wanted you to be a part of that part of her life and why she is so guarded about letting people see her writing because she's probably run into a lot of ignorant people like you. Like I said at the beginning, I think the best thing you could do for her is disappear out of her life because you're very closed minded. You don't sound like a kind human. I wouldn't want you around if your opinions of of writing, regardless of what form it takes, if that's what you're doing with writing, can you imagine other things that this person deems inferior? That is actually a really good viewpoint that you have there. I, I don't get that. I would be afraid to do anything around you. You're definitely the a-hole OP. Um, I hope that you do get some perspective and start changing the way you judge people. Well... Let me go ahead and let you know the consensus of Reddit. I'm ready. Resounding a-hole. I cannot even begin. There's one comment that I thought was really funny. And they said, we're surprised too, but thankfully she's seen the light and broken up with you. Yeah. Another person said, thinking you're still dating somebody who has clearly broken up with you is certainly more cringe than writing fanfic. Yeah. (laughs) Now, just to go ahead and provide a little bit of perspective here. Some commenters actually put down the Chronicles of Narnia is essentially a fanfic of Jesus. You have the Mortal Instruments series that actually started off as a Harry Potter fanfic and now even has its own show called Shadowhunters. And then on top of that, you have uh, certain written pieces like the Song of Achilles and Circe by Madeline Miller that are essentially just really well-written fanfics of the Iliad and the Odyssey. That's where I'm like, him trying to define what writing is based off of a category makes no sense. Writing is writing. I think every good writer comes from very humble beginnings. And a lot of people really need to grow into their writing style and how they want their actual readers to go ahead and visualize the world that they're building. I think writing is a very strong skill to have. And it starts from the beginning. The fact that you would hate on anybody for them trying to feel confident in something that they'd like to do more professionally, I think just shows how little, how, what what type of little mind he truly is. You have to start somewhere. That's basically what you and everyone said in these comments. And for him not to see that makes zero sense, especially because you guys are a little older now and you should be accepting the fun creativity, not sitting there and bashing it. And it just sounds like uh, you ended up playing yourself out of a good relationship. I mean, I feel good for the girl, though. She doesn't have to deal with your closed-mindedness. I definitely second that one. Grow up. Well, let's go on to our next story and take a scooter ride. Am I the a-hole for wanting my sister to pay me back because my nephew lost my electric scooter? Last year, I bought an e-move cruiser electric scooter, which I've since modified to add more speed, a new handlebar, and some other mods. The scooter itself was not cheap. At $1,500, plus mods put it over $2,000. I have a sister 
43 female, and a nephew, 13 male, who I always let house sit for me while I'm out of town on business. I have pets and plants that need to be taken care of, and they always welcome a change of scenery. So I had to go on a business trip last month for a week and let them house sit. My nephew has always asked me about my scooter, and I told him that it isn't for kids because it's extremely fast, and I've expressly forbidden him from riding it multiple times. His mother knows about this as well. Well, I come back from my trip, and my sister tells me that I'm going to be mad, but my nephew took my scooter out, left it unattended, and had it stolen. I was fucking pissed and asked them to leave. I told them they'd have to replace it, and my sister pleaded, with me. They couldn't afford it. It was a mistake and that he could just do chores around my house to pay me back. I told her that it doesn't replace my scooter and she said that any money would have to come from their vacation fund. I said, tough shit. Our parents have gotten involved and said that I'm taking it too far. They agree that my nephew should be punished and I should be paid back, but to take away their family vacation is just cruel and petty. They suggested a payment plan. I told them, hell no, that I used my scooter to commute to work often and that I want wanted it back immediately. Furthermore, he was warned not to ride it since it's dangerous. Now that I've started to calm down here a little, I wonder if I'm being an a-hole here by being so demanding and potentially punishing everyone else for my nephew's mistake. Am I the a-hole? Okay, so let me see if I understand the story correctly. I initially was on the side of maybe OP is overreacting, but then at the end of this story, he tells us that this is something he uses to commute to work. That's a problem. That kind of leans me into being more on the side of he's definitely not the a-hole because he needs this to commute to work. <laughs> this isn't some side hobby that he takes a scooter out to go enjoy an easy Saturday morning with. This is something from Monday through Friday. I need to get to work. This is how I get to work. OP had told his nephew no multiple times and his sister knows this. How old is his nephew? 13. 13. Okay. Old enough to know yes and no. You're definitely not the a-hole. I understand from the parents trying to work out, or his grandparents anyway, trying to work out some form of payment plan. But again, I lean back to this is his basically car. He needs it for work. You don't get to go on vacation if he has to walk to work every day because you and your child chose to be children, not listen to basically a very easy rule. Don't use my scooter. That's it. Left it unattended and then it got stolen. And then the worst part is... His sister waits till he gets home to give him that news. That is betrayal on a huge scale in my um, viewpoint. You can't do that. The second that bike got stolen, you probably should have let him know. And then you guys could have at least started the process of looking for it. If there was a chance for that, get the right authorities involved, seeing if there is a hope, probably not, but at least he would have been aware of it instead of walking into it and going, I know you're going to be mad. If you knew he was going to be mad, you should have told him the second that stuff went down. That's where you're shady. I definitely do not believe you are the a-hole OP. Well, the consensus is also that he's not the a-hole. In fact, let me go ahead and read a little updated post. Oh. Our poster says, hey, Reddit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I went to sleep last night and didn't expect this to get so popular, so thanks. Now to clear a few things up. People are taking offense to the verbiage, let, in my original post. Okay, let me explain. My sister and nephew view house sitting as a mini vacation. I've offered money every time to them to do the job, but they refuse, so I give them free run of the house and money for meals. I had insurance on it, but they won't do anything without a police report. My sister did not file one. She didn't think the police would accept the report because it wasn't a car or some nonsense like that. And no, I won't be filing a report with the police over my nephew. Listen, I'm furious at him and my sister, but I'm not going to get him into legal trouble over this. He needs to be taught a harsh lesson, but jail time and a record isn't one of them. At least, not in this instance. That being said, I'm going to take some time and think of an appropriate and harsh punishment for my nephew. I'll probably end up accepting the payment plan, but insist on interest. It's not about the money. It's about the principal. That should be all for now. Thanks. Were people really suggesting that OP report his nephew to the authorities over this? There were some people that really wanted the banhammer to come down on this child. What are people thinking? I understand, and we talk about it a lot on this channel. You should always be teaching kids that there are consequences for their actions. But going to that extent, you could be putting that child's future in complete peril 
for the rest of his life. You're starting him off on a terrible foot. I get it. He stole the the scooter. And it, that does suck. But have reasoning. Uh, good on the OP, it sounds like. At least he's willing to see it rationally now that he says it. The anger has subsided. Good for you for wanting to get on the payment plan. Hopefully there is something that you guys can work out that'll make it fair for you. So that way you have access to your scooter again at some point. Well... Let's go on from one kid's bad actions and let's see what's happening with this next set of kids. Am I the a-hole for not helping my wife with the kids when she wanted to keep them home from daycare and I have to work? So my wife and I have two kids, one who is a bit over two years old and another that is five months old. I work Monday to Friday, nine to five from home, occasionally go to the office. My wife is on maternity leave and taking care of the five-month-old I take care of the baby for overnight wakings and feedings. The two-year-old is in daycare. Whether I send my kid to daycare one day or five days a week for one hour or eight, it costs the same. My wife likes to pick up our toddler from daycare around 3.15 every day instead of letting me go when I finish work because she doesn't want our kid to be there so much during the day. The problem is, I am left watching the baby for 45 minutes while she is gone, and then for the hour that she is taking care of both of them, she gets overwhelmed, stressed, very annoyed at me and our kids. It's just not great overall. Every day, my wife tells me that she is exhausted. She has no time for herself. She doesn't get things done that she needs to. She's overwhelmed, just wants to relax when the baby naps, etc., I try to help out with the baby during the day when I can, like feeding and putting him down during lunch break. I just try to be available throughout the day if my wife needs me. Anyways, on to the main point of this post. Last night, my wife tells me she wants to keep the toddler home from daycare today. I told her that I didn't think it was a good idea. How was she going to feed and put the baby down for a nap while taking care of the toddler? She already gets stressed and overwhelmed just looking after the baby. Why put herself through more stress? I told her that I could not take the day off work and she would be alone taking care of both kids. She said she really wanted to spend time with both kids and felt like she doesn't see our toddler enough. Fine, no problem. If she wants to do this, it is up to her. I reiterated that I would not be around to help. Cut to this morning. I got up at midnight and 4 a.m. to take care of the baby. I got both kids ready and made breakfast for everyone. I start work and sure enough, 20 minutes after I started, I hear my wife trying to tell our toddler that she needs to go to the other room to put the baby down for a nap. Of course, the toddler doesn't want to leave her side. Toddler starts crying. I can hear my wife getting frustrated. Wife finally leaves to put baby down and comes back. She now has to juggle going back and forth trying to settle the baby by putting the pacifier back in. We are starting some sleep training. And the toddler who wants all of her attention. Finally, baby gets settled. Wife is obviously stressed and tired and it is 9.45 a.m. She comes into my office where I am working and asks, did I not hear her struggling? Why did I not come and help? Am I the a-hole for telling my wife I told you so? That I said I would not be around to help and this is what you get? That she should have let me bring our toddler to daycare? Okay. Spasa <laughs> bowel. <laughs> because OP lays it out pretty fairly. He says, and it kind of sounds like to me anyway, that he's being a good dad, right? He's helping his wife out. He's got midnight 4 a.m. shift. That's on him. And he's sounds like he's keeping to it. He is very observant of his wife about how stressed she gets. Very, It sounds easily. Even though you know you have a toddler and a five-month-old. I understand from her perspective wanting to keep the kids around because you only get them at that age for so long. So wanting to see them is great. But you have a five-month-old. <laughs> and a toddler, yes, toddlers want attention. So it sounds like OP does a good job of what he needs to do. Right. He says it. He's got a pretty good work life balance right now. Oh, yes. Especially when it comes to all of the helpings at night, even though he also still helps during the day and goes to work. Yeah. So from what OP says, it sounds like his wife gets a little overwhelmed quickly. When you're dealing with two kids under the age of three, that can be overwhelming for anyone. But it sounds like by nine o'clock, she was already over it. But he knew that this was going to happen this way. Because it sounds like through experience, it has. Yes. It's not something that He's unfairly giving her. He's just going, look, there's a reason why we put the toddler in daycare. So that way you're not getting overwhelmed with how much you need to do for you and the child. I 
gotta say the only bad part was the i told you so that's really not something you want to sling around in a relationship no one wants that hopefully your wife saw this as a a lesson and maybe sometimes putting the kid in daycare for your sanity (laughs) and (laughs) mental well-being is a good thing well the consensus is that he's not the a-hole in fact a lot of people said you made all of your expectations clear yep you said you're working from home and a lot of people misconstrue work from home. It's not, uh, sometimes it didn't work. I can work. help you out yeah. with everything that's going on still. It allows more flexibility, yes. But your priority should be your work because had he been in the office, it yes. would have been his work. Yep. Now, there were quite a bit of other dads who actually responded to this and said, we are in similar situations, my friend. And I think no matter what, as long as he continues his communication and yes, unfortunately, some harder lessons have to be learned on both sides well they're young parents it sounds like um their kids are under three so they're still learning how to cope with all that but just understand they do grow up (laughs) these phases do pass well let's go ahead and leave the situation and see what's happening on this plane ride for our next story am i the a-hole for man spreading on a plane man spreading on a plane titillated a few months ago I, 26 male, was alone on a long flight, approximately six hours. I had a middle seat between a young woman, 20s female, in the window seat, and a woman, 30s female, on the aisle. I'm tall and am never comfortable on planes. My knees always dig into the seat in front, and it can be quite painful. I usually try to take a walk around the airport before flights to stretch my legs, but neglected to this time. It was Spirit Airlines, so even less legroom than usual. About half an hour after takeoff, I found my knee inching to the side for the sweet relief of open space, specifically the no man's land in between seats, level with the shared armrest. But I wasn't paying attention to my knee the entire time. I'll concede it's possible that at some point I was occupying space that rightfully belonged to my window seat neighbor. All was well for approximately two hours. At this point, the woman in the window seat called over the flight attendant. She asked her something like, could you tell him to keep his fucking leg in his own fucking seat? With horror, I understood she was talking about me. I instantly retracted my leg in deep shame. She added something about his enormous dick. My understanding was that it was meant to be a snide reference to the idea that spreading your legs is about male genital comfort. But she wasn't speaking very clearly and the flight attendant, 50s female, didn't seem to understand her. The flight attendant asked her some sort of clarifying question, but she didn't answer and eventually the attendant went away. I had been shocked into silence, but when the flight attendant left, I frantically began to apologize, but she refused to speak to me. She acted like she didn't hear me. Instead, she started furiously texting on her phone. Yeah, texting during a flight. I thought it was weird too. Aisle seat woman said she had some extra space on her side I could use, but then promptly went to sleep. Oh well. I tried again to apologize to window seat woman, but again she ignored me. I went from embarrassed to confused. I kept replaying it in my head, wondering why she didn't simply ask me to move my knee instead of calling over the attendant. I started sneaking peeks at her phone. My defense is that I was baffled by her behavior and wanted answers. I'll admit that I was being judgmental too. Here's why. She spent the last three hours of the flight watching TikToks about shaming obese people and texting someone she called Papi. I didn't see all of it, but a significant portion was definitely about me. She wrote, men really do be too much sometimes with a laughing emoji. She ignored me the whole rest of the flight and I ignored her. I got a good but painful workout of whatever muscle it is that keeps your knees together. Am I the a-hole? This is uh, an adventure that we're about to go on because this is a hot topic everywhere. Space, leg room, all of it on planes. This is one of those. So I will say as we start this, it's a six hour flight. You do have to be mindful of the space you take up. That's just kind of how I feel about that. I can understand about the knee problem. But (laughs) unfortunately, you picked the middle seat (laughs) of this plane when you know you have issues, when you need to stretch on a six-hour flight. That's where I, I keep circling back on. At that point, you do need to be more aware of if you need that type of leg room, maybe pick the aisle seat. So that way you can swing your knee out a little bit when no one's around. Obviously, you need to pay attention if you're doing that, but that's an easy way to make sure that you can accommodate your knees in pain. 
Now, speaking for the lady to your left, because I think you said this is where the problem came, the one on the, the one near the window. Correct. Her not immediately communicating with you the second you pass the boundary into her space, because no one wants to be encroached upon, especially when they bought the seat, right? You buy the seat, that's your space. It should not be up for grabs for anyone. So my wonder would be between, because OP says it, right? She doesn't call the flight attendant over in this story till about two hours in. Mm -hmm. to the flight of a six hour flight what happened between minute one and hour two that he had missed the signs that she was already upset about the situation that was unfolding because you don't go from being happy and okay to saying the things she did to flight attendant about him in the middle of a flight without having stuff happen before that is that fair to say he didn't see any of the signs before this had happened he thought everything was okay but he sounds very observant of his surroundings (laughs) Up to this point, right? Nothing was going on. I put my knee out. And then all of a sudden, this woman sitting next to me has a problem without telling me first is what I'm understanding here. There are other ways to accommodate your situation other than forcing it on other people next to you. There's not one person that I don't see having a problem with this because it's your personal space. You shouldn't have to accommodate someone else when you bought the ticket for yourself. Now, the problem for you is that you were shocked that she didn't ask you first. I think that she was doing her best in the situation to make sure that she didn't start more conflict with someone she didn't know. So you're asking someone in a small confined space to talk to someone. Now, don't get me wrong. In my situation, I definitely would have asked you first, but I'm not on that side of the fence. That's not my worries aren't her worries. So the way she handled it, again, I don't like the choice of words and how she went about that part of it. She was more than right to have talked to the flight attendant first before going to you. You knew what you were doing. I find it very hard to believe that you didn't know that you were sticking your knees in her space. After this, you were snooping on her phone when she was choosing to ignore you. Like that's a, there's a lot of red flaggy on your part. It's kind of hard to believe that you didn't pick up on the body language and the signs that were probably already being shown to you, but you just chose to ignore till there was a problem. She put you in your place. You didn't like it. Again, the choice of words and how it happened. I don't like that part. B.I.O.P. In this situation, I do believe you're the a-hole. You do need to be more aware of your surroundings and how you're impacting other people, especially when you're talking about bought seats. Well, let me go ahead and give you the consensus on Reddit. They say he's definitely the a-hole. Of course, everybody could have better words when it comes to how they talk about other people, but I digress. There is one really long posting by a commenter that truly breaks it all down, and I definitely suggest our listeners to go ahead and find this because it is very long. But you did hit on some key points from what this commenter said. Let me go ahead and hit on some other points. First, the way that she doesn't want to talk to him, he should have just been okay with it. Yeah. If she doesn't want to and she chooses to ignore him, there's a good reason for it. And the fact that he would continuously try and talk to her after getting those signs that she does not want anything to do with him goes ahead and show that he doesn't truly understand boundaries. Nor does he care for her reasoning because exactly. he was snooping on her stuff. <laughs> exactly. Which goes ahead and promptly puts him into a creeper sort of section. Sure. Because because if he wasn't understanding these cues, because as you've pointed out, and what a lot of commenters actually pointed out, there's no way that he couldn't have picked up on some cues that she was putting down. Yeah. And for him to think that she wouldn't actually be aware of him snooping on her phone is really kind of crazy. And the fact that she would be looking at and would plainly show what she's texting goes ahead and shows that she's very much aware. Literally is what him. this guy is doing <laughs> is encroaching on her space. The fact that she would go ahead and message anybody is none of his business. And who cares what it is that she wrote? He essentially was stalking her because he wanted answers. She was talking to some guy named Poppy. As you have said, either you buy yourself another seat if you need that space, or you go ahead and you purchase and you don't penny pinch and buy a seat that has the extra leg room that you need. But you don't go into other people's space. You can't. You don't demand answers. People, they don't owe other people a response for why it is that they feel what they do. All that you do is you do your best to be as courteous to your neighbors and you stay in the space that you pay for. That's sort of the 
the whole thing throughout everybody that seems to have responded. Well, it looks like this plane has landed. So let's go over to our destination wedding next. Oh, boy. Am I the a-hole for choosing an adults-only hotel for our destination wedding? Throwaway account. Was originally going to ask about another situation, hence the name, but that resolved. I'll be as succinct as possible. My newly engaged fiance and I are getting married in November in Mexico. We live in New York, but I am a second gen immigrant. So we picked a destination wedding so my extended family could easily join without visa issues. We called today to tell my fiance's brother and sister-in-law we're getting married in Mexico at an adult only hotel. They have two kids, 11 and 4. Sister-in-law said she doesn't have anyone to watch the kids so they can't come. We understood, but said since it's March and they have several months, maybe they can figure out a plan? She then added her work schedule couldn't allow it either. My fiancé asked if his brother could still come as he really wanted his family there. Besides his brother, he only has a grandfather who is coming. And then sister-in-law said it was inconsiderate that we picked a hotel that wouldn't allow her kids and her husband wouldn't take a trip internationally without them since they've never taken a family trip out of the country. The kids were in the background and could be heard yelling, let's all go to Mexico, I want to go. Then she abruptly got silent and hung up. I feel bad they can't join and briefly debated finding a new hotel, but I really like this hotel and we've already paid a deposit. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to change hotels and stick to adults only even if that means my sister-in-law can't attend? Added note, they are legally not married. We just refer to her as sister-in-law. She has always wanted to get married at a destination wedding, so my fiance thinks this is another reason she's being grouchy towards us. Am I the a-hole? All right, well, let's buckle in. Because this one is full of manipulation. That's terrible. I don't believe you're the a-hole, OP. It's your wedding. You're having a destination wedding. That's dope. Congrats to you guys. Don't let your sister-in-law manipulate you out of what you guys want for your wedding. If you want no kids, then that's just the way it works. I'm kind of off-put by the sister-in-law because not only did she call you with excuses upon excuses, because I understand though, about the whole not being able to find a babysitter. This is months out though. So I don't know why you would go ahead and say that part when you're like, by the way, our wedding is in like four months. And then your sister-in-law comes back at you with, well, we can't get a babysitter. (laughs) And you go, well, there's, there's months out. Maybe we can see what happens. See if you guys can get a babysitter. She goes, well, my work just wouldn't be able to accommodate this. And then her next rebuttal to you about all this is, why can't you guys pick a different hotel so we can come? But you just said that you won't be able to get that time off from work. What am I missing in your argument? And then at the very tail end of this, she goes and has the kids in the background go, let's go to Mexico to just put the cherry on top of the guilt that she's trying to put you guys through. What I would probably suggest you do though, is you need to go and talk to your brother. It sounds like it's important to you to have him there at the wedding. Talk to him and see what his reasonings are first before anything goes further. Because it sounds like she's definitely seeing this through a lot of anger and he brings up an interesting point that the sister-in-law wants to have a destination wedding as well so maybe she has a little bit of more uh, jealousy and anger that she shouldn't have towards you in this situation but i gotta say i don't believe that you are the a-hole so first things first let me go ahead and read and edit it to add that the poster put in they said willing to take constructive feedback But anyone labeling me an a-hole for a destination wedding, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry for that. There's an entire industry of destination weddings. I should have added we even offered to add them to the Airbnb that some of my family chose to stay nearby so that the kids could come on vacation. But then it became about them missing out on all the inclusive part. There was no pastoring. We had a five-minute convo and tried to offer alternatives. Now let me go ahead and provide you with the consensus that I see. A lot of it seems to be split pretty much in the middle. Some saying that our poster's not the a-hole, as you've pointed out for your reasons. And then some people saying, yeah, she is sort of the a-hole. That the destination wedding was apparently moved to Mexico to accommodate just her side of the family. Doesn't have anything to do with her fiance's side of the family. And his family is small, but some people kind of took it the wrong way. You moved the destination outside of the country, which would by far be way more money 
Okay. And then on top of that, you moved it to an adults only hotel where the only ones that would truly be excluded would be her fiance's side of the family that has some kids in it. Okay. Because from how she's explained it, aside from her fiance having their grandfather or the brother, sister in law, and kids. Well, that's probably why I looked at it that way was he only had those two family members that were going to attend. Which then pops me to, it's really odd that, yes, rather than the brothers talking to each other, that it's become the fiancé, our poster, and the sister-in-law that seems to be talking about it. Yeah. That strikes the whole thing as a little odd. And then she puts down that the conversation was only for five minutes and listed all of the alternatives. Something seems to be really off when it comes to the explanation. And I would say where, yes, I could see there being a little bit of manipulation from the sister-in-law. The poster seems to be manipulating the perspective of how us as readers are supposed to be understanding the story as well. Okay, that's interesting. Now, a lot of people picked up on, on this, that there's a lot of inconsistencies you're talking about i did not pick up on them i only <laughs> saw it from their perspective and seeing the the way the mother was going about having the kids in the background guilting them and all that stuff so i guess i can that's an interesting way to pivot this and look at it the other way around where maybe we're not getting the full story or a version of the story from rop which just goes ahead and <laughs> comes back to my mind why is it that this was labeled as the a-hole when i don't see any a-hole for me until i actually started reading to what the commenters put out where not only does it take a while for people to sometimes get passports you're getting passports for young children you're having them try and accommodate to go down to another country would it not Sure. be within the right mind to try and understand the destination that you're going to to make sure that your family's safe. I guess in my assessment of it, I fail to put that into the equation where we're talking about visas. I, I only looked at it as, well, your wedding, your rules. Now, a lot of people actually put down that sometimes a lot of costs, like extra costs, fall on guests when it comes to destination weddings. Sure. And for a family to go ahead and try and do this could tax them. It, this could just be a means for them to essentially say, like, we can't do it. And you're not getting the hint that we we cannot do it. Yeah, if you guys cover the hotel, but would you be covering our food? Would you be covering the getting the passports? Would you be covering our flights? There's no guarantee that all of that would be covered by our poster and her fiance. Well, I can also understand from this viewpoint where the mom in the situation now is saying that they're trying to make this a not just a wedding destination trip they're trying to make this the vacation as well Correct. because they're trying look if we're going this and we're spending all this money we're going to also vacation while we're there attending your wedding and, i can understand that from this point of view and a lot of people tend to do this where they do these destination weddings people come and then when the wedding's done it kind of becomes like a you a scatter and you go do your own things, things yeah you know now here for me is another thing that I was trying to personally wrap my head around. So for me, understanding where the faux pas happened, rather than the poster saying, would you mind going ahead and talking to your husband or, I don't know, brother-in-law to go ahead and see if there's any alternatives that you guys can come up with so that we can make this happen. It sounded like our poster wanted an answer right then and there. Couldn't you go ahead and find some time? We just want to hear your yes rather than letting the sister-in-law and brother-in-law go ahead and talk this out so i guess what we're saying is this story is kind of muddy because the person it's coming from already sounds like they're trying to manipulate the facts there's a lot of things that don't make sense okay now on another note at least for me i think the real faux pas was truly when the poster said well i mean if you and the kids can't come why can't the brother come that seems to hit really low under the belt. If there was such open talks between the sister-in-law and our poster, to essentially say that, well, I'm almost betting that feels like hurt. a slap. 
Yeah. I think in this case, this is either there are no a-holes here because nobody's made to go to any kind of wedding at the same time as nobody has to change their wedding plans either to everyone sucks here. There seems to be a little bit of selfish between both sides and we're not getting the full gist of the story because manipulation of truth. (laughs) Some points don't connect properly. But yeah, as you heard, a lot of people are split right down the middle on this situation. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Well, let's go on to our very last story of the day. This has been a long day. It has been a long day. And this this is one of those really odd stories I'm going to end us off on. So be prepared. Am I the a-hole for taking the longer route to spend more time with her? Non-descriptive. I like it. I 19 male, work a full-time job in the tech industry. My role is 100% remote, so I rarely have a reason to go outside. However, after recording data on my personal life, I concluded that my social life was in poor state. As a result, I decided to pursue hobbies that would allow me to befriend people my age and meet women. One such hobby led me to connect with a group of physically active young adults. I was instantly taken by a woman, 22 female, Amira in the group. She is slim with a small waist and perfectly round breasts. The cherry on top is her face. Her sense of humor is rather childish, but I was still fascinated. One morning, six of us went hiking together. We decided to hold a mini competition. We'd go off into pairs and choose three different routes to complete the trail. Whichever pair completed the trail first would be crowned the winner. I knew the route well, as I had studied the area the night before. However, Amira wasn't familiar with the trail at all. I volunteered to be her guide and companion for the competition. Our only aid were physical maps. As soon as we embarked on the journey, I decided that it would prove fruitful to seize the opportunity to get to know her. I purposely chose a long, complex detour so we could spend more time together. At the start, we made great conversation, and I found out a lot about her. However, as time went by, she grew more frustrated. She kept looking at the map and insisting we're going the wrong way. I told her that the maps were not accurate as they didn't account for path closures and other factors. This was not the truth. After a while, she grew more stressed and claimed she needed the toilet. We did find a place she could relieve herself, and this seemed to have given her some peace. After about six hours, the trail itself was roughly three hours. We started making our way back. Amira had already communicated with the group and began accusing me of taking unnecessary detours. I simply pointed out her desirable physical features and the impact they have on me. I thought she would be pleased to hear these compliments, but she was not. She told me to stop describing her at all and that she doesn't want to hear about my biological responses. She did not speak to me for the rest of our journey. I've since been kicked out of the group. In fact, everyone in the group has labeled me all sorts of things. Amira described me as a selfish, weird a-hole and asked me to stay far away from her. I suspect these feelings are temporary and born out of confusion more than anything. Am I the a-hole for attempting to nurture our connection with the landscape serving as a beautiful backdrop to what could have been? Or should I have not used this particular activity to carry out my plan? What the f*** is this story? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's what I was saying. (laughs) Is this coming from an AI? (laughs) My bodily responses? She had to tell you to stop telling her your bodily responses that are happening because of her. You make my body hot and tingly. How old is OP? 19. Oh, he's young, young. He sounds very... Creepy. Yeah. There's only one word. It's only creepy. How are you speaking like that? Understand everyone grows up differently. And I, hey, it sounds like you had zero game growing up if you're talking to girls like that. Or just hashing out plans. Yeah. Like that. Six hours when it's a three hour hike? It's a three hour hike. He said six hours before they turned back. I don't think anyone would be okay with that it's funny how he starts the story off though when he's describing her it's the creepiest thing (laughs) you definitely need to learn how to be more he just needs to stay away from her yeah you sound like you're starting to become a stalker yeah (laughs) like this is like introduction to it yeah you've read the routes you're like oh 
clearly I already know all this stuff. We're going to go my way. I know where the closures are on the road. You're not accounting for any of these things. There was gaslighting where he's, she's all like, we're going the wrong way. And he's like, no, we're not. These yeah. maps are just wrong. I would be very. And then he puts it in parentheses. This was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's very analytical about like his approach to these things. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being lost on a hike with this guy. I think that the amount of creep that's in the story is uh, emanates, and I'm sure she felt that the entire time. Oh, yes. She had to use the bathroom. She was Can probably you... frantically texting during that point. Can someone come out here and help me? And they're like, where are you? And she's like, I don't know. That would be fear-inducing. Yeah. He's still probably on the trail listening to her pee. Oh, I, God. Ugh. I can uh, hear you from no. here. <laughs> Amira. <laughs> I'm happy he put it on the internet for us to enjoy it. He tried to take it down. Oh, did he? Yeah. I read this. I could not believe anybody would post this. And to have the shame to actually take it down too. I was just like, oh, this- he's 19. I'm hoping that he learns from this and he can turn it around. He's young. That's quite a story. Oh, yeah. Deleted the account, deleted the story, and has apparently fled from Reddit. Definitely, I do believe that the... OP is the a-hole in this situation. He's, there's a lot in there. So the consensus is a resounding a-hole. I mean, the comment section just... It I'm was, sure they lost it. It was flooded. There was one that just said, info, what the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> there was another one that said, this is the start of a horror film. Other people say, you literally tricked this woman to be with you in the woods just to sexually harass her. How could you even find that okay? Other people said, you essentially kidnapped her, and that's terrifying. Yeah, I had to end Monday on that's, Spicy Monday. Yeah, that's a, that one's a spicy meatball. Yeah, don't trap people on hikes, please. <laughs> well, let's just hope that this young man has learned do not continue down this path. Please veer through another doorway. This one's closed for construction. Learn some social skills, buddy. I think uh, you could gain a lot from that. I hope that he has read every single commenter and has learned don't. He starts sending messages out to people. Will you go on a hike with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that story was horrific. Every once in a while, I find something. Monday. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, you see in the world what you carry in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> if you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We are regularly posting on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> I have to continue on with that it. That was good. <laughs> As always, listeners, we enjoy hearing your opinions on the stories we provide. So don't forget to go ahead and leave your comments in the section below. And remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I love it. 